I'm actually um, more involved with the botany there. I've got a small herbarium for the mountains nature reserve. I'm the chief cook and bottle washer of that establishment. Um, what you're looking at here, oops, let me go back. That is the highest point on Mount Lens at Saddleback Hill, and then the reserve lies in that area. So, if we take a map, um, this is Mount Lens Nature Reserve, also known as Barberton Nature Reserve Phase 3. This is Phase 1 of Barberton Nature Reserve and Phase 2. It's a cooperative reserve between MTPA, uh, private landowners, and a community. Uh, the management is da done collaboratively, but also then the biological management is mostly done by MTPA. Um, these two reserves, or these parts of the reserve, of Barbara's Nature Reserve, is uh, managed by uh, MTPA. Um, it's in the Barberton Centre of Plant Endemism, so it's high biodiversity. Um, and these reserves specifically have been proclaimed to protect the flora because you have uh, endemics there that occur nowhere else. Uh, Mountainland specifically is a water catchment area. Uh, the water flows down into the Crocodile River eventually with communities on the boundaries and further down that uh, depend on this water. Um, you can just basically just see, see the vegetation there with your uh, light brown areas that your Barberton Montaigne grass, like grasslands. Then you have your um, Lego Gord Sour Felt in that areas. And then, um, am I right now? Uh, your uh, Mountain Bush Felt. And then you have your uh, light purple areas that Swaziland Sour Bush Felt. Down here are small, small areas where you actually have um, uh, scarf forests, uh, which are also very, very unique in this specific reserve. If we look at the environmental sensitivity index, you can see it scores very high. The green areas are low, and the pink areas, or the light pink, as you can see, that's very, very light pink, that scores extremely high. Um, these reserves specifically are on serpentine geology and they house, um, for example, Protea carvata, of which there are, we estimate, just about 2,000 plants left over and nothing else. And then you have in this, this part of the reserve um, zero recruitment of the plants, which we don't know why. We speculate that it may be that it was um, due to old farming habits, but also you have a lot of invasives. And in this area of the reserve, you have extensive recruitment and there's much less, uh, for example, lantana that comes up on that side. Um, if we look at mountain and specifically, we have approximately 50 species. I'm not distinguishing here between what have been uh, 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 logged as um, invasives and category plants, um, but we, have a focus on specific plants that we see as a priority for us. And that's basically pom-pom weed. Um, we have a system of early detection because they spread like fire. And um, we, uh, the best example that we have of practical application of eradicating them was being on the ground, taking one hectare and two people and eradicating that hectare in a day. It can be done, but then you have to follow up because we find that they uh, re-establish very quickly and in wide areas, and you have to be so alert. I'm very glad to hear about the biological control because <laughs> to slip um, poison around is quite an issue. Then, um, the Chromalina odorata, I feel it's out of control in steep valleys that were disturbed. Um, we had teams in to eradicate and to control them. Um, it was a little bit of a logistical nightmare on one level, and on another level, um, we had to access neighbors' property to get to these specific areas, and the neighbors would not collaborate. They actually hampered our efforts, even though they did complain about the plants that seems to creep into their area. So it is an ongoing struggle, and we lack the resources to control many of this. Um, we 
need a lot of poison, for example, and also now with the manpower, we are running into uh, problems with the people around us and also with regards to tools. Um, black wattle, we have pockets in the reserve and we address them from time to time. We actually now have an uh, effort where we asked our, one of our neighbors to push his plantations out of our water catchment areas as we are catchment and his pines were drinking a lot of the water, which he gracefully did, but then he omitted to clear the areas from all the wattle. So now we have loads of wattle that comes up in these areas and um, of course their seeds are going to go down the, the, the rivers into the reserve. So that also again, when you so solve one problem, another one crops up. Um, Lantana is spreading slower than Chromalina, but I think there's quite a, um, an extensive seed bed there. Um, we also have uh, uh, had yes workers in. We had working for water coming in. And then the yes teams, I don't know if you're aware of the yes teams from Investec. They were Investec collaborated with government in 2018 to employ the youth um, and uh, our people were trained to in the surrounding communities to do alien invasive clearing and also as game scouts for the reserve and that's a one-year appointment per person and um, we actually had from the game scouts around the reserve that now are establishing their own trails and their own tourism activities from what they've learned on the reserve so that's a good spin-off for them. Um, Crofton weed next to streams, luckily very easy to pull out, very easy to eradicate, but they also quite persistent, so they take constant effort. And then uh, Parthenium, um, the Leon has re it's, um, released some weevils in the area, so we look forward to see what they do. In the reserve itself, we don't have such a problem because it's vast tracts of unspoiled um, grasslands, but we do see that they are around the reserve on the more um, disturbed areas. So we cannot just rely on poisons. This is an endemic butterfly, and the latest Barbara endangered. What you see, oh, sorry, these spots is where it occurs. It's the only place. Then you have Fairview Mine on that side of the reserve. We are bordered by them. There's Sheba Mine, and they are on the hills in between. And we know very little about these butterflies. We don't even know what their food plants are. So there's a lot of research that still needed to be done on them. It's uh, one of three endemic butterflies. So we cannot go into these areas and eradicate by poison or any other means that we feel is unsafe. So we need by, uh, mechanical control or walk by foot and pull out all of these plants that we see uh, that, that threaten them. So the reserve, you have to know your area in order to try and gauge what you need to do. You cannot just go and um, go full out and use poison. You really, really need to, to understand what you are dealing with, especially if you have a species of which you know so little about. And then our main challenges was red tape to access uh, uh, poison, especially plenum, as we found that works very, very uh, well on um, uh, pom pom weed. Um, the last time we've asked for poison was just before COVID, and uh, no paperwork was sent to us, even on several requests. So, um, if we can have a solution where a priority list is drawn up by working for water in order to look at areas like areas for high endemism um, that really, really want to do do something about the environment, you will be very welcome. So we need more funding and also when we get these teams that come and work, we need team leaders for them. We have small teams that work, but if we have teams from the um, rural community, we need strong leaders for them. And at this stage, that was a little bit of a, 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 an issue with regards to them and the esti uh, estimating their responsibility versus their team as eventually they all become friends. Um, we have a, uh, also neighborly relationships that we have to maintain and like I mentioned, while well, one neighbor isn't very forthcoming, 
with regards to supporting our efforts. Um, yeah, and the YES program, it also de depends on the above and uh, the support from our community around us because at one stage, the YES workers came from an adjacent community to where they were working and that community actually uh, informed them that they have to stop working because they wanted the jobs. So that we had to scrap that and take those people far, far away. Also, we have um, a lack of education, I think, in the broader communities, because if they see pom pom, it's a pretty little flower, and they all want to pick it and take it home. Then, how can we manage this? We are looking at how do we do this as a practical integrated management plan. Uh, we are at the moment upgrading all our management plans and looking at new strategies for the reserve. And we need to be shortlisted somewhere for poison and a regular supply. Um, obviously, funding is an issue. We need more research to be done on the ground on impacts, and training, education, obviously, um, and vigilance and rapid response. Pom pom, we are very vigilant and rapid, but when it comes to, um, for example, uh, chromolina in very difficult areas, it's difficult for us to control. And then obviously follow-up action is always needed. So, short and sweet. Yeah. Yeah.